cashmere, please? Well, we spoke last night about cashmere, and uh, the Prime Minister really feels he has it under control. I know they, they speak with Pakistan, and I'm sure that they will be able to do something that will be very good. We spoke something? about it last night at Gordon. Mr. Modi, do you want to add? Bharat and Pakistan are very violent issues. और पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री के चुनाव के बाद जब मैंने उनको टेलीफोन किया था तब मैंने उनसे कहा है कि पाकिस्तान को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है हम दोनों देश मिलकर के गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ें हमारी असुविधाओं के खिलाफ लड़े और हम मिलकर के दोनों देश की आवाम की भलाई के लिए काम करें ये संदेश मैंने पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री जी को भी दिया है और राष्ट्रपति ट्रंप से भी हमेशा हमारे इस बायोलेटर संबंधों के संबंध में बात होती रहती है And after Mr. Imran Khan became the Prime Minister of Pakistan, I called him up to congratulate him, and I told him that Pakistan needs to fight poverty, India too. Pakistan needs to fight illiteracy, India too. Pakistan needs to fight disease, India too. And so together, let us join our forces to fight poverty and all the ills that are facing our two countries. Let us work together to for the welfare of the people of our two countries. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the message that uh, I uh, keep giving my counterpart in Pakistan. Along with uh, President Trump, we also uh, keep talking about the different bilateral issues between us. Mr. Modi, would you like to have President Trump be involved in negotiating between Pakistan and India? Bharat or Pakistan, ke sare issues bilateral hai. Aur isliye, hum dunia ke kisi bhi desh ko. इन के लिए कष्ट नहीं देते हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि भारत और पाकिस्तान जो 1947 के पहले एक ही थे हम मिलजुल करके हमारी समस्याओं पर चर्चा भी कर सकते हैं और समाधान भी कर सकते हैं इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान आर वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड्स Uh, to, uh, in fact, uh, uh, try to do anything in this because these issues are bilateral, and I trust that uh, before 1947, when we were one country, that even afterwards we can find solutions through discussions. Mr. President, is that offer still on the table? Uh, I'm here. I have a very good relationship with both gentlemen, and I'm here. Uh, if for any reason, but I think they can do it themselves. We've been doing it for a long time. President, the Chinese have said today publicly that uh, it's more low-level calls that have happened, and they're downplaying the significance of the calls the U.S. administration. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Low-level, uh, the vice premier is low-level. I don't think so. Uh, what's in your mind, the low-level? Okay. Uh, what is the position of the gentleman that was quoted in the newspaper today? Right. Well, the vice premier, as Leo Vo, came out with very significant statements, and we've been communicating. Uh, through intermediary back and forth with. That's the vice premier of China. Yes, sir, I understand. That's I, I, not low level. I understand, I agree. Uh, I was just, uh, there was a statement that the, the spokesman for foreign ministry, for instance, said they weren't aware of the calls happening. I don't know about a spokesman. There's been communication about that. At, at the Thank highest level. Thank you, Mr. At the highest level. Can you clarify the calls? No, I don't want to go into it. We don't want to go into it. Hey, look, in the, 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 the meantime, time, our country is doing great. We're doing great. Prime Minister just congratulated me. Everybody that's met has congratulated us on the job we're doing in the United States with our economy. Our economy is phenomenal, best it's ever been, and that's despite the trade deals. And when the trade deals get done, like we did with Japan yesterday, we did a really big, tremendous trade deal with Japan, and we have others coming. We're negotiating now in earnest with the European Union because they want to do that. They want to do that, and I do too. So we have. When we get these deals done, this our country will be transformed. 
I mean, it'll be monetarily transformed. It's such a difference between the horrible, horrible one-sided deals that we had in the past. And frankly, past administrations should be ashamed of themselves for allowing that. But we have many of them. One of them is the USMCA, Mexico-Canada. And hopefully that'll get uh, voted on very quickly. Everybody wants it to happen, so hopefully we can make that a bipartisan bill. But we have many trade deals that are doing very well, and including China. And I think it was necessary to go through this, uh, you would say, a rough patch, but I'd say maybe much more than a rough patch. But that's okay, because we've been paid billions and billions of dollars. And you know that prices haven't gone up, and there's been no inflation, and we've put a lot of money in the Treasury, and, uh, you know, tens of billions of dollars. And I've given a lot of it to the farmers that were hurt. I've been able to give a lot of money, compliments of China, to the farmers that were hurt, because they were, we gave them $16 billion and we gave them $12 billion the year before. That made them whole. That was the amount of money that China didn't invest in our, to our farmers, give to our farmers. So the farmers have been amazing, but they're very happy with the job we're doing. But eventually, they're going to be the biggest, or one of the biggest beneficiaries, okay? President, did you, did you, did you attend the climate session? Say it. Did you uh, make it to the climate session? Were there any conclusions that you should bring? I'm going to. In fact, it's going to be our next session. So we haven't had it. Do you have a message that you'd like to deliver to you? No, I want clean air and clean water. And we're right now having the cleanest air and cleanest water on the planet. But that's what I want. I want absolutely clean air and clean water. Mr. President, just briefly back on China. We saw the comments from you about wanting calm. Um, calm. Calm, exactly. Just wondering if you could clarify what you meant about the call. Was that with my husband? I, I don't want to talk about calls. We've had calls. We've had calls at the highest levels. But last I don't want to talk about that. Tonight, but but the call. vice chairman put out a statement last night that was a statement and saying that he wants to make a deal and he wants calm. And I think it's a very good word to use, calm. It's not a word that I use that often. But it's a good word to use. And I think it's one of the reasons that's a great country. I mean, they understand. I think that that message also helps with respect to Hong Kong. I really do. I think it makes it easier for Hong Kong to do something. And I think that President Xi will do something with Hong Kong. I really think that message is a good message with respect to what the ultimate outcome is in Hong Kong. Very, very positive message. And uh, we appreciated it. We appreciated it. What else? Anything else? Mr. Tr uh, Mr. President, what are your uh, your latest thoughts on your threat on pulling out of the WTO? And if you do, can I also ask Mr. President Modi what your response to that in, in, in terms of how it affects India's trade strategy? Well, we haven't been happy with the WTO, but now we're winning cases. We won the big Airbus cases, you know. Uh, it's a tremendous case, and it's uh, billions of dollars. That was a very recent victory, and we're winning cases now. We're being treated more fairly now in the WTO, which we appreciate. I think that we will talk about both of them. We will talk about both of them. When we talk about both of them, we will have a lot of knowledge. He actually speaks very good English. We just don't want to talk about it. I think that you should ask us to discuss these things and when we if you need, we will communicate to you. <laughs> 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 Mr. Russia uh, has just recently said they have no intention of asking uh, to be readmitted uh, to the G7. Uh, however, no, I wouldn't expect that to ask because why would he's a proud man? He's done a, a real job, and why would he ask? No, it's something we discussed, and it's under discussion. Uh, no votes or anything, but uh, I would be inclined to say yes, and so would others. And some probably wouldn't be, but it's just a discussion. No, I would think that he wouldn't do that because he's a proud man. He wouldn't ask, but uh, if something would happen, he would be asked, and I, I'm sure he would say yes to that. Do you have any indication from them that they would accept? No, I, I think it was a very good discussion. It was the initial discussion, but it was a very good discussion. But I think it would be appropriate. I think it, was, it would be good for Russia. I think it would be good for everybody. I think it would, it would be a positive, but it's just a discussion that we had. It was a very interesting discussion and, and very, uh, pretty even. I think ultimately people like the idea. 
Mr. President, what would be your message to the American people in terms of what is your biggest achievement at this G7? Well, we've had a lot of achievements. Uh, we have an achievement with Prime Minister Modi because we're doing great trade. We're doing a lot of trade with India. That's an achievement. I think, obviously, the Japan deal is a tremendous achievement because it's one of the biggest trade deals and it affects directly our farmers. Even the fact that he's taking all of the excess corn that China didn't take. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of corn, and he's buying that. Japan is buying all of that corn at a fair price. And, uh, you know, that was great. So that was very important. I also think that unity is very important. You know, we had a very good, despite you read the newspaper stories, the stories bear no resemblance to what's taking place. You saw me with Chancellor Merkel. You saw me with all of them. We had, the relationship is great. We have seven nations. In addition to that, we have other nations like India and others that came in. Australia came in, Scott. We have a lot of people came in. And I'll tell you, that it's been total unity. And what would be the area no of most unity, There's been sir. no dissension. And there's been no fights or arguments. There's been no, no anything. I mean, we have, there's been great unity here. And honestly, the papers haven't reported how good it's been. So what would be your most common ground? You know, is it climate change? Is it gender no, equality? I think we have a lot of things. But I think really the unity, the, the, uh, the fact that we're all getting along so well, I think is one of the big takes from this. We really have good relationships. And we're doing a lot about a lot. Okay. Just so we get our reporting right, I'm going to give it one more crack on China. When you were referring earlier to the blue statement, which we all saw, did you mean to say that there was also a call last night, or was there not actually a call? Last night? There were discussions that went back and forth. Let's just leave it at that. Last night and last before last. Night. Yes. With China. Last with China and before last. Night. Numerous. Look, they want to get something done. I've been saying that for a long reason. And why, why wouldn't they? They want to get something done. They've lost millions of jobs. Their supply chains are being hurt. And once those supply chains go, you can develop new supply chains, you can't get them back into China. So China is, is run by really a great leader. I think he's a great leader. He wants to do something. They lost over three million jobs in a very short period of time. A lot of companies have left China and they're leaving China. They want to get it done. I knew that. I could have told you that without talking, but we are talking. And would you still like to see U.S. companies leave China? Depends on whether or not we make a deal. If we don't make a deal, I'd like to see them leave China. Absolutely. If we make a deal, I'd like to see them stay there and do a great job. Mr. President, on the Afghanistan peace talks, do you have an updated timeline? Or are there any snacks? No timeline. Whatever it is. We're no rush. I mean, we're there. We're really a policekeeping force more than anything else, frankly. And uh, said so we could win that war in a very short period of time, but I'm not looking to kill 10 million people. Okay? And we are uh, working along with the Taliban, with the government, and other people, too. And we'll see what happens. No time left. Okay? Thank you very much. We're going to be doing a news conference in a little while. So. Just one more thing. Just if one you need one, do you need one? I don't think you yes. need one. I mean, I can't imagine any other questions. Uh, I just want to thank uh, the Prime Minister. He's a great leader right here. Would you, would you allow him to have nuclear weapons? Thank you, Press. Would you allow him to have nuclear weapons, sir? Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Would you allow India to have nuclear weapons? Thank you, Press. Thank you. Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press.